In this presentation, we're just going to finish off a few key differentiation rules. So we're do, going to do question 51 and question 55, and I'm going to explain uh, what to do in each case one by one. The first one actually is question 51 is simple enough. Essentially, what f we have here, f of x equals sine of x plus cos of x. Okay, so essentially when we look it up at the tables, essentially what we get is straightforward enough. Actually, I, I started writing it as, as if, if, if it was an um, important note. So essentially the answer is cos of x minus sine of x. Okay, now that um, cos, the derivative of cos x is minus sine, so it's just plus minus, so just resort, uh, resolved into a minus. Now, if you're familiar with the uh, differentiation tables, that's just uh, coming from those differentiation tables. Uh, the only thing you actually have to watch out for is the sign. Uh, so, just as a remark, actually, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw this what they call a w the wheel, and it's quite handy for differentiating. So, there's, it's a wheel with four quadrants. Okay, okay, and so if you're differentiating. Okay, you're going in this direction. Okay, so to differentiate sine of x, you would get cos of x. Okay, and to differentiate uh, cos of x, you would get minus sine of x. Okay, and if you're differentiating minus sine of x, you would get minus cos of x. Okay, and if you're differentiating minus cos of x, you get sine of x. Okay, now that's uh, with the from the point of view of differentiation. Okay, and uh, but also uh, different uh, differentiation, you get the idea. So, but also it actually works in reverse for another type of calculation called integration, where if you integrate cos of x, you get uh, or if you integrate cos of x, you get sine of, uh, sine of x. Okay, so it's a handy little mnemonic about how to. Uh, cope with those. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't deal with sine of ax or sine of b, um, cos of ax when those are um, derivatives uh, or, or those are constants. For example, so what I'm going to do here is actually from the from tables, <coughs> we would have an expression like this: the derivative of f of x of e to the let's say ax is that's the derivative of that is a times e to the ax. So it's sort of a bit like the power rule, okay? But essentially what you do there is e to the a of x is left alone, but you also, when you have a term here like e to the a of x, uh, when you get the derivative of that, you just bring the a term out and uh, pre-multiply it by that. So for example, f of x is uh, e to the 4x, the derivative, of, the derivative of that is uh, 4 times e to the 4x. Now, why is that relevant? Because it sorry, I'll just leave that up there. Why is that relevant? Because it applies to cos x, uh, cos ax, and sine ax as well. So let's have a look at question fifty-two. Okay, so f of x is sine four x. Okay, the derivative of that therefore equals four times a uh, derivative of the rest of it there. And that is cos 4x. Okay. Now this is a uh, consequence of the chain rule, but you don't actually have to invoke the chain rule. You can actually uh, quite often uh, sort of go. Uh, you don't have to show your workings uh, for a lot of these. You can just state them directly. Uh, cos 4x times 4. Okay. Uh, or 4 times cos 4x. Uh, let's have a look at 53. Question 53, written in red pen there. So question 53 is very something very similar. f of x equals cos of 4x. The ooh, this look good. It's the pens can get very jumpy. Uh, derivative of that is 4 times minus sine of 4x. Okay, or in other words, minus 4 sine 4x. Okay. So question 50, that's uh, again something very similar. And again, you can almost look at that as a consequence of the chain rule, but you don't have to use the chain rule. So question 54 is, we're just going to add, add them two up together. So f of x equals sine of 3x plus uh, cos of 5x. Okay, so derivative of that is 3 cos 3x 
minus 5 sine 5x. Five okay? So that's using the res uh, pretty much the sort of example from uh, 52 and 53 together. And the last one, something a bit unusual looking, let's have a look at it there. Question 55 is f of x equals e to the no uh, half x over 2 okay um, e to the x over 2 plus 10x or 10 to x okay so uh, this is a here we can rewrite this one here as e to the one half of x where a is simply one half plus 10 of 2x okay and let's get the derivative of that that is equal to one half e to the minus uh, e to the half x and the other one is 10x is sec squared x. Now that does not come into that like quadrant thing I had earlier on. So the answer to this one is 2 times sec squared x. These are sort of interesting uh, terms here. You can actually look at what sec squared is equivalent to. Uh, but for the time being, that's exactly what it says in my table. So that is exactly what I'm going to use. So that is question 1 to 53. They're pretty important. Now, the reason is that these are sort of kept in is particularly for those, or the, I've included these in the review sheet, is so that you know how to do, get the derivative of something like that, which is something like this, and also that you know how to get the derivative of something like this, which is that there. You don't really need to know the chain rule, you can sort of imp uh, implement them directly. So that's question 1 to 55 of the differentiation review. Thank you.